Alrighty. First thing we should do is take a thumbnail because I always forget to take thumbnails. Okay. So, what do you think we should do for a thumbnail? Do you want to introduce yourself first in Korean? <laughs> you go first with your channel. Okay. Hey, Ali Hoopa. Y'all hate the Madison. Oh, y dog. Y'all a har. Mayed. Megan. Annyeonghaseyo. Megnimnida. Pronunciation was definitely a little rough, but I'm working on it, so. Very nice. You did good. And if you thought mine was impressive, I've filmed that intro several times. <laughs> so that's the only reason. Yeah, I just gotta work on my pronunciation. I don't have an opportunity to do a lot of speaking practice. Mm -hmm. So. Don't worry, I don't either. So. You gotta find ways. Yes. Anyway, like we said, I'm Madison. This is Megan. Hi. She has embarked on the challenge to learn the language in 90 days. How are we doing? I feel like we're doing pretty okay given our schedules and everything. I like how she added pretty okay. She's gonna say like pretty <laughs> good and then she's like, mm, no, we're not doing that good. So, alrighty. We're gonna do a Q&A. We made our own questions because nobody gives us questions except her mom and Sophie. So, also she has a channel in the description box and she has an Etsy store. And I'll leave both of those linked down below. So one of my mom's questions for us was, what has been your biggest challenge in learning a new language? Oh no. <laughs> okay, you go first. <laughs> like I said, I think for me it's the pronunciation because not only are there a lot of, um, like the characters that sound similar, it's also just getting all of those tones right, being able to differentiate them and just try not having an opportunity really to try and practice that pronunciation, so. For me, I would say it's sentence structure because I only have to learn three new letters and while ua is annoying, the A with one dot over it, I feel like depending on the word I can get it pretty well. So sentence structure is a really hard thing for me because like the more words you get, the more complex yeah. it becomes. So that's what I have. Okay, we'll do Sophie's next. I'm excited to hear your answer to this. <laughs> Sophie asks, what's one language you will never attempt? Go. So personally, I wouldn't want to attempt German. German? I feel like the tone of voice they have and like not to offend anyone who is German, like they always sound like vaguely angry when they speak. I don't think I could ever like match that energy to sound right. I feel like I could sound angry. Which but... is weird because I have German in my family and my dad used to be able to speak it like very... Hmm. Very little, but I'm not, I'm surprised you said German. That was not what I thought you were going to say. What did you think it was? I don't know. Well, you were saying like tones, and Chinese came to mind. Obviously, Mandarin and Chinese. I, tr I tried to learn that in high school, and, and all you know how to say is McDonald's. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it. Um, to be fair, I did have a great teacher, mm -hmm. but. I feel like the American school system sucks when it comes well, to... Well, and she was a native Chinese speaker, but she wasn't oh. fluent in English. So there were a lot of miscommunications between her and us about what was actually supposed to be getting done. Hmm. My answer, I feel like, might be a little cheaty because I did do a semester of it in school, and that's French. But I would never want to actually put all my effort into learning it, like I'm doing with Swedish because I just don't like the way it sounds. People say it sounds romantic and sensual, and I'm like, no, I think it doesn't. I don't really think it does. See, I think depending on who's speaking. That's possible too. But also that grammar, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I'm already gonna try with like Spanish, and that's enough. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to do it again, so. No French for me. All right. I could have said Arabic, but sometimes I see people learning Arabic and I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. So I'm not going to learn Arabic anytime soon, maybe ever, but it's not a never. So. Okay. All right. Uh, my mom's second question for us is, what have you found has worked best for you to learn a new language? Like what resource or anything like that have you found that has made it easier? Ooh. Well, my first response is to say the one that I paid for a lot of money for, <laughs> but I don't think that's the best resource. So maybe Netflix, because hear me out, it's affordable for one, 
Two, you can like watch plenty of shows and then you can shadow them, which is where you pause the show after they say a line and you repeat it. I haven't done that yet because I'm scared, but I also get vocab from there. Mm. So I allow myself five new words per episode instead of like all of the words I don't know because that's like 174. Oh so God. let's not do that. Um, but that's what I would say my best resources is Netflix. Okay. What's yours? Um, I think my best resource is, um, I purchased something called, um, Learn Korean with Tiny Tan, and it, it's kind of like a leapfrog where it'll, like, talk to you when you tap on the book, and so having something that does give me the pronunciation to everything has helped, being able to hear, like, the slight differences in all of the sounds and everything, and the book offers lots of opportunities to practice speaking and writing and reading throughout it, so I think so far that's been one of my better once I've done. I've, I watched her do it today and it was like very like good. It seemed like a very good resource. Um, and I don't know how much you paid for it, but I don't know. Oh. Was it expensive? It's like 50, 60 dollars. I think my mom and I spent like 130 or something okay. each. Well, that's like and that's. we bought the same stuff. That's so. pretty decent but price. But I don't remember if that includes shipping or not, but. I mean, it could be expensive, depending I mean, on, like, but that's a pretty nice I resource. Mean, we're, uh, we're also the same people who has, who spent $300 on advent calendars. <laughs> okay, so. so compared to that, <laughs> yes, it is a lot more affordable and cheaper. The one I paid for, I was trying to do, like, I'll pay, like, a year, like, I'll, I'll say yeah to a year for $8 a month, and they took it all at once and I was oh, no. like whoa so it's not a very I'm not very happy with that purchase yeah. but um I'll save that till I've actually used my year-long membership so <laughs> I'm excited for this one and it is if you could learn any language overnight to fluent native speaker level what will it be and it can't be Korean because you're currently learning that right hmm you first I need to think for a minute okay are you guys ready? Because I would monopolize this baby, Japanese. Not only does it have like three separate like alphabets, but like I think you read up and down. I don't know. It, it looks like a very complicated language to learn and there is so much manga you could read and translate. So is it like a little bit of like a greedy answer? Kind of. <laughs> but I'm just saying the money possibilities. Okay. That's why. I've thought this question over several times. I can tell. I've never thought about this. Um, I guess mine would probably be, um, yeah, I want to say Spanish because I really should probably know Spanish as a Hispanic person who grew up around people speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I think I would pr prefer to learn like French or Italian or mm -hmm. something within that realm. I think probably Italian more than French. I would love to learn Italian. Why? Just because you like the way it sounds? Um, I like the way it sounds, and then I watch um, several different things, and it has lots of people from different countries in it, and they speak in a combination of their native language and English, and they don't always translate what they have said in their native language. So I think it would be neat to finally know what they're saying, hmm. even though you can kind of figure it out from context. but. Look, hers is so humble and wholesome, and I'm like, give me that money, baby! Meanwhile, I'm just like, I want to understand the F1 car racers. <laughs> exactly. They're yelling. Yeah, and you know, like, you don't want to make any money off of that. You don't care if you're a translator for them. You're just like, I want to be able to watch them and understand. And I'm like, I want to make money off of manga. So. I couldn't draw, so that's out of the possibilities. Fair. Okay. Your turn. Okay. So this one might be a little weird. If you could read and write a language, but you could never speak it out loud, read what language would you pick? Read or write, but never... Read and write. Read you can and read write. and write it, but you could never speak it out loud. Okay, my first answer, is because I hate the way it sounds, is Mandarin Chinese. Okay. I don't like the way it sounds. And I'm also thinking, like, some... Ma like there's it's not called manga but there's the graphic novels in the it's like manhwa or something yeah and so money <laughs> <Is> another <laughs> I'm thinking of like how can I become the most rich off of this seriously <laughs> <laughs> um but I don't like the way Mandarin Chinese sounds I don't like the tones it, I guess it could depend like on male or female but I hear like female like Lindy 
Bots, I think that's what her name is. She speaks Mandarin Chinese, and I just, I just skip over it every mm -hmm. time because I don't like the way it sounds. See, my answer is the same because, like I said, I tried to learn Chinese in high school. It was Mandarin, and I had a really hard time with it, just with miscommunications with um, the teacher and everything. Um, but I always did kind of retain the reading and writing more than I did the speaking. Mm -hmm. So I think being able to just like finish off that knowledge. Um, how do you find time to practice Korean with our incredibly crazy and busy schedules? And do you think that as you become more fluent and comfortable in the language, you'll find better ways to fit it into your daily life? Um, so for the most part, I do it like before I go to bed or um, it's one of the first things I do like before I leave for work in the morning. Um, but it's typically just like a morning or a night thing and I try and do like half hour to an hour if I can. Um, just because those are really the only times because during the afternoon I'm running errands, doing chores, different things like that, so I don't really have time. Mm -hmm. I'll like listen to stuff in Korean to get a little bit of listening practice in, but that's about it. I won't actually sit and study. I would like to say that I'm good at making sure I got the time to do my language learning, and I don't. I'm <laughs> horrible at that. So I think though if I was more fluent in Swedish, I would be able to like fit it in more so I could like watch television in Swedish without having to pause mm -hmm. to write down vocab. I would be able to watch like Love and Anarchy I think is a like a com comedy show. Mm -hmm. and I love comedies so that's a high goal to watch a comedy show in Swedish. I've heard they have really funny and like risky comedians in Sweden that go on television mm. so I would love to be able to watch one of those. <laughs> I want to get the jokes, okay? I don't get the jokes. <laughs> so my second one, bear with me because I wrote it weird. Okay. And I don't know if I can word it correctly. Alrighty. Is there like a particular piece of media, like a TV show, movie, book, video game, etc. that you want to like be the first thing you follow along with like fluently or use as like your major test to yourself for your fluency? Mmm. Well, I started learning Swedish for Young Royals because, well, I didn't start because of that, but that reintroduced me. And I don't want to say, I would like to maybe read Edvin Reading's Instagram posts. Okay. And he's, he's a native Swedish. He speaks English unbelievably well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's what I would want. And he has, like, other movies coming out, so eventually, maybe, I could ever get to that level <laughs> while he's still acting. Sure, but that's my answer. Okay. And you? Uh, mine would be, in terms of reading and writing, um, I would think I would like to replay one of my video games, um, probably, like, Pokemon or something like that that's pretty simple. So if I do struggle, it's easy enough for me to figure out what I'm doing still. Mm -hmm. Um, but in terms of being able to like hear it and understand it, I have several Korean shows I watch already. So I think just being able to follow along with any of those would be great. I would like to make my Sims main language like Swedish or another target language in the future because I love the Sims. So Occasionally I still switch my phone to Korean. Yeah, my phone is in Swedish and it gets me in trouble sometimes because I'm like, how do I return this book? Okay, um, it's a guessing game, truly. It's a guessing game. Um, what is one thing you're excited to do when you reach a higher level, i.e. listen to podcasts, like passively, watch television shows without subtitles? Um, for me, I think it would be um, being able to watch TV without the subtitles because I like to do things while I'm watching TV, like I'll knit while I'm watching TV or I'll put together a puzzle, something like that. I can't just sit and focus all the time. So being able to just tune in and hear it and not, okay, I looked down for five minutes to knit and I looked up and now I've completely lost the plot. Right, like when you, before you started knitting, somebody was alive and you look back up and now they're dead. Exactly. <laughs> I would like to read a book. I'm excited to get to the level where I can read a book fully in my language. Not short stories that I found online, but a good full-on novel. A fat boy, because I love big novels, so that's mine. That's a good one. And then the last one that I could think of is if there was a fictional language that you were able to learn, what one would it be? And it can, be, like, it can be from anything. It can be from a book, a movie, a TV show, just like a language that doesn't really exist in our world that was made up kind of specifically for that media. Oh, no. I read a lot of fantasy books, so I'm trying to, like, do they actually have, like, their own languages? What is your answer? Um, my answer is... Um, 
the Navi language from James Cameron's Avatar. Oh I my just gosh. always liked the way it sounded when I watched the movie. I'm a huge fan of that movie. I'm excited for the second one. But I just I always liked the way it sounded. So That's a good answer. I don't know if I can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a fictional language, but I can't really think of many. Can I just copy your answer? Yeah. I love Avatar, so I'm gonna steal <laughs> hers. Okay, excuse me, but what about troll hunters? <laughs> they have their own language past Madison, um, and even if you've only seen the show, I want you all to know that in the books, they certainly have their own language. That's what the amulet is for, not for protective gear or magical abilities. In the book, the amulet is what the troll hunter uses to understand the troll language. So even if the in the show they don't have their own language, they certainly do in the book. So uh, I'm not gonna call it Megan's answer. I have my own. And I am disappointed in myself for not being able to choose that. Because I was just so taken aback by the beauty of the question that I was like, I can't think of one. But troll hunter, I would love to, trolls. I would like to speak with trolls, okay? That's my answer. That's, that's our next 90 day challenge. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> trying to find resources to learn Navi itself. Well, I feel like Navi might be, like, reminiscent of an indigenous language. Yeah. So I feel like I saw someone somewhere actually put together, like, a dictionary with what they could based <laughs> off of the movie and what they were saying and how the subtitles translated what they were saying. Interesting. Would you ever want to learn an indigenous language? That's not my last question. Um, you know, I really don't know. I feel like there's like so many indigenous languages out there. Yeah. I don't know what I would want to learn, but some of them are just like very interesting. Yeah. And sometimes you can only learn them if you learn, like if you speak Spanish, you have a better opportunity to learn mm -hmm. those indigenous ones. My last question is, I know the answer to this, but it is what language would you choose to learn next and why? Me first? Yes. So the language I want to learn next is Thai. Um, I really like the way it sounds. It's very, like, rhythmic and poetic in the way it sounds. And apparently I like torturing myself by trying to learn new writing systems. Yeah, she just decides, why would I learn Latin? The Latin alphabet. Let's do Thai or Korean. Japanese. I wouldn't be surprised if she decided to do Japanese next. <laughs> I don't know. Um, mine's Russian for my girl Vita Nostra right there. So pretty. And I will be learning Russian in 2023. So, yeah, that's kind of my goal, too, is to get through, because I have three different books I'm working through with the Korean is to finish at the very least the first one and then see if I can start finding resources at the very least to start with Thai. I think you said that you weren't going to start learning Thai until you learned the Korean alphabet. Yeah. And as we saw today, you're kind of pretty good at that. Yeah. So it gets in the cards. Is it the cards? All right. You have anything else you want to say? Um, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Well, this was fun. It was. And would you like to come back next Janu this January? Upcoming yeah. January? To film our specific video? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me. Again, all of our links are down below. Say goodbye. Bye. In Korean. I don't. Oh. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I'm gone. I was like, say goodbye. And she's like, goodbye. And I was like, no, Megan. Yeah, off the top of my head, I'm gone. All right. Well, then, hey, Dua. And I'll see you guys all next time. Adios. You know that one. I do. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Always outros are weird.